Do you, like me, have a big collection of hats and shoes that just kind of get dumped at the front door without a real home? Well, today I'm showing you how I solve that problem by creating this shoe rack system here and making this lovely cushion cover on top for the kids to sit on to put their shoes on before we go out the door. But before we get into that, let's see some bloopers. Am I doing this right? Thanks. Quality pin. Ah, I forgot to pin this side. <laughs> Wrestling a crocodile. Not that Aussie. Hi, crafty people. Today I'm sitting here in my entry hallway where we have this lovely shoe rack system that I have recently upgraded for all of our shoes and hats and all of the things that just get dumped at our front door. Before having this system here, we just had a basket on the floor which ended up having hats and sunscreen and everything all piled on top of each other. It wasn't functional, it didn't look great and it just needed to be upgraded. So I decided I was going to make a system where the kids could access their things really easily but it also looked really nice and suited the decor in our house. In today's video I'm going to show you how I came about setting up this space and what I organize inside all these containers but I'm also specifically going to be explaining how I made the cover for this cushion. You might be trying to set up a similar space in your house with a bit of a cushioned seated area for your kids to put on their shoes or you might have a different bench sort of system somewhere in your house that you would like to make a padded cover for. So I hope that this tutorial is helpful in showing you how I have done this and that it might inspire you to make one of these for yourself. If this is your first time on my channel, then welcome. My name is Marie and this channel is all about motivating mums to make and mend. I have four kids and so they have a lot of shoes and hats that need to be stored somewhere and I'm really happy with the system that we have come up with. The only thing that I'm not happy with about this area of the house is that we do have a very blank white wall behind it. So if you've got any ideas of some sort of artwork or anything that I could put on this wall to make it look a little less bare, I would love to hear what you suggest. So let me know in a comment down below. But with all of that being said, let's get making. My mum makes a bench, a bench seat. Like I already said, originally we just had the basket of all the random stuff sitting on the floor, but then I decided to buy this shoe rack here from Ikea to see how it would look and if it would function well for our family. I decided the best option was going to be having two of these shoe racks so that they took up the space a bit better and so that I was able to fit four baskets inside the shoe racks to store all of the things more logically. I found these baskets that I've put inside the shelves from Cheapers Chips and they were the perfect size to fit two next to each other inside the shoe racks. It looks like they were made to be put in this shelf. At the end of the video, I'll go through each of the baskets and show you what we have put in them so that you can see how we've organized this area to be really functional for the four kids. The next step and the main part of this video, considering that this is a sewing channel, was to make a cushion to put on top of the shoe racks so that it would function as a bench for the kids to sit on. I measured the dimensions of the top of these two seats while they were pushed together so that I could work out how big of a piece of foam I would need to make the pad for the top of these shoe racks. Then I headed out to get a piece of foam cut to those dimensions. Got my custom cut piece of foam, so we're gonna go home and ready to put it all together. <laughs> the foam I chose was a medium density and five centimeters in height, and the kids have been finding it very comfortable. I'm glad I went with that. This is what it looks like so far. We've put the foam mattress on top, and now we just need to make the cover for it. And we have this cushion here at home, which has this lovely texture. I made this cover before it's not got a zip or anything I just did a simple little fold over so I wanted to find the same fabric as that to make the bench seat cover with so Lane and Elijah went to spotlight the other day and could you find the fabric yeah you did didn't you it was the last remnant piece left like this came to a grand total of do you know how much it cost $20. yeah Grand total of $2.90 for this remnant that was all they had left of the same fabric. So for $2.90, let's hope that it's big enough to use for this. Yeah. Let's open it up and see, shall we? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, almost fits. It was about 10 to 15 centimeters too small. I'm gonna have to do some work joining it together. Yeah. Maybe make two separate pieces and have the join in the middle. 
a shame to have to do that, but for $2.90, it's okay. <laughs> I then procrastinated for a couple of months because I really was not looking forward to making this cover and having to reconfigure that piece of fabric so that it would fit. But we eventually got there, here we are. We're finally getting around to making the cover for this cushion. The fabric I had was a big square and I needed it to be a long, thin rectangle. And I wanted the join for these pieces to be in the very middle of the cushion cover so that it looked a little bit more intentional. So I measured the length of the foam pad and halved that length. And I cut the fabric to be half the width of the cushion. Do you ever have those projects where you just procrastinate for so long because you don't want to cut into the fabric? Because that is this project. Once I fixed the width of this cushion cover, I used the off cut to then also lengthen the cushion cover as well to make sure that it fit all of the dimensions of my cushion correctly. So now my fabric is the correct width to go across the length of the foam, which was the problem dimension. Uh, but before we start putting it together, I'm going to just top stitch these open bits here flat so that they will be a little bit less noticeable on the front. It'll make the seam here look a little bit more flush and hopefully a bit less noticeable that it's there at all. So after an hour, I've joined my fabric together using these four panels to make it wider and narrower. And uh, now I finally am able to actually start the process of making the cover for the foam. Buy a piece of fabric that fits though. Don't bother doing this. I think the join is pretty well hidden though. Cool, all right, let's see if it fits. The cover is going to be made up of one long rectangle, which is going to go around the four long edges of the cushion. And then I'm going to cut two smaller pieces, which will be the ends on either side of the cover. Okay, so it's five by 35 and I'll need to cut out a rectangle that shape but then leave seam allowance around all four sides. So now that we have all our pieces cut, we're going to hem the two long edges of our main piece of fabric here, just hemming them under like this. And then to be able to put our cover on and take it off again, we're going to have an opening on this side here. You could do buttonholes on one side and sew buttons on the other, or you could put snaps on there so that you can join these two sides together. So we're going to first hem these two edges and then we're going to put a row of snaps on one side and then the other. I've now hemmed both sides and it is almost 10 o'clock at night so I'm going to leave it here for today and come back tomorrow and hopefully I'll be able to finish it off then. So see you then. It's been a whole week because I've been sick. But in that time, I have done a few things towards this project. I've made some little ties like this so that I can sew them to the bottom side of the cushion cover. And then I'm going to be able to tie them to the mesh top of the shoe rack. So I've made 10 of these little ties. I cut a long strip of my fabric and then used my bias binding maker in order to make these strips. That way it folded my fabric in half and then folded the edges into the center. Then I folded the tape over on it itself and ironed it down so that I was able to then sew along that straight edge to create these little tabs that I'm going to use to tie on. This fabric frays a lot so I had to zigzag stitch the ends of each of the little tabs that I have made and then they are all ready for me to use on my cover here. The other thing that I did in the past week was to attach some snaps here on one of the hemmed edges and the way I attached them was so that I, they were facing out and then I have flipped them under so that they will now be, the clipping part will be facing inwards. That way when I clip them shut, the back of them where the cap is, is covered over by the fabric so it'll just look really neat. Now that I've done that, I'm going to sew a straight stitch down this side, but because the snaps are quite close to the edge, I'm going to change to my zipper foot and then just sew a straight stitch down that edge. And the next step will be to start attaching the sides of our cover. To attach the little side pieces onto the main part of my cushion cover, I started at the center point and pinned there first, and then pinned all the way down the sides of my small piece of fabric so that I was able to sew them against that long edge of the cushion cover. I pinned the main piece of fabric along three edges of my little side piece and made sure to leave a bit of a gap on the last edge so that I could fold it all over to make that fourth edge match up properly. 
To turn these corners, I literally just sewed down one long side, put my needle in, rotated the fabric a bit, sewed down one of the short sides, put the needle in, rotated the fabric a bit, and sewed down the long edge. Whoa. All right, we need to make way of it. Make way. I sewed one side of the cushion cover on, and then I wrestled it onto the cushion to see how it looked. This is the side I just sewed on then, and I've placed the cover onto my pad to see how close to make this one because I find that as you put your cover on, uh, you'll want to stretch it so it's nice and tight. So even though I cut the fabric to be the right length of the cushion cover, I can see there's a bit of overhang here because I want it to be nice and tight so it doesn't have all wrinkles on the top. So now that I've tried the cover on the cushion, I can see I've got about four centimeters to cut off on this side here. And then I'm going to re-zigzag stitch the edge because this is very fraying fabric. And then I'll be sewing the other side on in the same way as I did the first side. So first measuring the center points and pinning it on, sewing down the sides, leaving the end a little bit of a gap there so that I'm able to fold these sides over on themselves. Now we try it on again. I've tried it on now and it fits across the length so I've got both sides on and it's a good level of tension on the top so that it's not pulling it too tight but it's also not saggy so that is what it's looking like this is the top of the cushion cover and this being the back and on the top of the back here we have the snaps that we've already put on with the enclosed um, caps of the snaps so we need to put the other side of the snaps on the bottom here so that we can snap it together like this to close over this back side. And the other thing we need to do is using the ties that we've made is to sew them on the bottom here so that we're able to tie the bottom of our cushion seat to the mesh of the shoe rack so that the kids can't pull it around everywhere. So let's do the uh, ties first, I think. Then we'll put it back on the cushion to do the snaps while it's attached to make sure that they're lining up in the right spots. And then uh, we can install it on our shoe rack. I spaced out my 10 ties so that I had five on each half of the shoe rack. I pinned these on just in the center point of the little tie, and then I ran a zigzag stitch across that middle point just back and forth over the same point to make sure that it was secure in place. And you only wanna be sewing the middle part so that both sides are flapping up so that you can tie them together. There we go. Tags. All the tags are all sewn on. And, the, and the, yeah, I don't so we never pull them off. But uh, now it's time to go play Monopoly, is it? No. What are we playing? Stratego. All right, let's go play a game. Yeah, Stratego. This was seriously the never-ending project, but that night I was finally able to put the cushion cover onto the cushion so that I was able to attach the snaps in the correct places. You need to make sure that you're using the right half of the snap so that they snap together, that you haven't used the same part on the top and bottom, otherwise they won't clip together. Also, if you want to know about my snap press, I'll leave a link to that down in the description box. So at this point, I've put our cover onto the cushion and I've put it on, but I realized that I didn't finish off the edges here on the back. And I was going to just leave it and fold it over, but. It was bothering me so I'm going to fix it. I don't want to have to take the cover off again and sew this section on the machine so I'm just going to hand sew it but if you remember to do this part before putting it on your cover you could just fold these sections together like this and machine sew when it's inside out along this edge here and even though you're closing off that fourth edge don't worry it's easy enough to get the cushion in and out because they're squishy so they can easily come out of this section even when this edge has been closed over. So I've got my hand sewing needle here and I'm just going to sew this section closed to make it look neat on both sides. So I've just finished hand sewing that corner there and I've already done the far one. So the last step is going to be attaching it to our shoe rack using these tags that we made. I'm going to poke these tags that we made through the mesh here on the shoe rack and then tie them in a double knot underneath. I found that I had to poke all of the back row through first to be able to tie them on and then I did the same on the front row, I was able to poke the front row through but I couldn't quite get the middle tags to attach because once you've tied some of them on it's too hard to access those middle ones but that's okay. I think it'll still be nice and secure, the main thing is they won't be able to pull it off so there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed watching as I made this cover and rearranged this area of my house. 
a quick little tour of what is in these sections if you're interested. We have the boys winter and summer hats all in here, so Lane and the two boys. And the same on the other end is my hats and the hats for the two girls are all in this basket, both summer and winter, although at the moment we just need uh, summer hats. This second basket from the left has all of their socks, which we figured was a better way to store their socks than in their bedroom where all the rest of their clothes are, because this is where their shoes are. So each of them has their own little box of socks like this, and they can take a pair of socks out when they're going to put their shoes on. The last box here is a bit of a miscellaneous things box, so it has sunscreen, has my purse, has a bunch of tissues, and sometimes it has our reusable shopping bags in there as well, but they're being used at the moment. So that is a tour of what is in those sections. If you feel inspired to make a cushion cover like this or to follow any of my other projects, I'd love to see your projects as well. So you can tag me on Instagram at mymummakes.marie. If you've enjoyed this video, I would love to know by you clicking the like button down below. And if you subscribe, you can come back and watch some of my future videos. The next video coming out on my channel is actually a Christmas video. I'm not making Christmas outfits like I did last year, although you can go have a look at last year's outfits if you are looking for inspiration for that. This year I'm going to be making some Christmas sacks, some Santa sacks. So if you are looking for how to make some decorative Santa sacks as well, you can come back next week. So click that subscribe button to know to come back next week and watch that video. So thanks again for watching and until next time, go get creative and I'll see you later.